So what's up guys, we are taking apart one of the items on this desk. Now if you've read the title, you would know what it is. They are both Black & Decker, so... Okay, it's the leaf blower. Don't know why I asked that question. Alright, now we're going to remove what we can. That is these. We can press that in, this front part will come off. Just gotta have enough strength to do it. There it is. You yeah, considerable, considerable amount of strength to do that. No, that's what we're taking apart. Go with the pH two. Shoot. Do I even get that screw? Uh, I think it's very too deep. So these ones are easier to get to. Yes, yeah, some are easier to get to than others. And I'll possession the camera somewhere else actually. This might be better. A top view. Oh, not even that one. They really do need to make a narrower drill bit. Um, right, for that we're gonna use my trusty Walmart screwdriver then. PH1, where is that? Yes, here it is. That's a Y1. Uh, where's my PH1 screwdriver? There it is, found it. It's on here. It's Phillips head type one. Never sure. Never mean I mean, I was never sure what it actually means. So I guess I'll just we'll just call it the Phillips head one. So this is actually kind of a shroud that shroud that goes over the uh, fan. There are four screws on that. This one's proving to be quite hard to remove. That one's not coming out. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna. This is actually like over like seven years old, I think. And that one isn't gonna matter. So I'm gonna pull up on it while I'm unscrewing it. Then add those to that little silver tray over there. That's my parts tray. Comment down below where I got this. Okay, so here, oh, spring fell out. This is the mechanism that releases and uh, holds on to this. Yep, this thing. It's kind of like the grill, what you should call it. There's a switch here, spring. Well, the 
switch is what I'm, it's probably most important, uh, most interesting. There it is. Here is a switch. Let's see who it's made by. I'll put it on my palm so that y'all can see it better. There is the specifications of the switch if anybody's interested. Uh, if, you're, if you know computer keyboards, you would know Cherry um, is the switch manufacturer. I found a Cherry switch in a uh, dryer one. <laughs> yep, in a dryer. Fell, yeah. I have to give it to them. Black and Decker products are extremely reliable. Uh, I had this thing for years, like I said. I forgot exactly how many. But uh, all I gotta say, it survived a lot. We're on the other side of it, kind of going at random. Got one more screw. Oh, there's the motor. It's not that dirty in there. I expect it to be more dirty because I poured a lot of stuff in there on accident. On accident. Oh, that's nasty. Okay, let's see what other screws we got to take this part. It's not the motor that failed, it's the, the battery. Yep, the old battery in here failed. And I opened up the battery. Um, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to, but whatever, you know. Uh, well, here's the thing. The fuse was still good. So I guess the battery cells were, have died. I'm gonna figure out how to remove this. Any more screws I'm missing? Oh, uh, hmm. A couple more. Oh, almost there. I don't know why, but this thing reminds me of like a turbocharger on a car. Except without the other side of it. What? I thought one side's called a compressor, the other is called something else. Yeah, except without that side. Right, we have got it open most of the way. I'm just gonna peel this off. Um, not sure how. Oh, there it goes. This is the clip that holds on the, who's a what you call it, uh, the, the nozzle, I'd just call it. Here's the switch. You can dial in how much power you wanna give to the fan. Okay, we do, we do need to remove the, um, oh, something broke off. A stud broke off. <laughs> yep, we need to remove these. So, best way I can think, oh no, is it soldered on? Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, one side looks to be soldered on. We'll try the other side. Yep, the other side pops off. Maybe I'll give this one another go. Got it. Woo! Let me straighten that out. Just, just for consistency.
Now, the next step I'd take is to, ooh, that motor is really damaged. That's the only word I can say, it's damaged. I can't describe it in any other way. I can't think of a word to. Uh, I'm going to put some protective gloves on the sides of this blade. The fan is very sharp, so I'll be right back. Oh, wait. Guys, you couldn't see that. Uh, yeah, so I just removed the... I don't know. What? Hang on, I'll be right back. All right, uh, after a quick trip to my garage, I got these gloves. So I'm depending on these to keep my fingers in one piece. Got it, good. Hmm. Try pulling on the fan somehow. Yeah, I'm gonna try this. Recently restored this screwdriver. It's full of rust, actually. Yeah, have you seen an uh, other video I recently published? It's about fixing a toilet. I found it there. <laughs> Okay, I have an idea. I'll pull on both sides. Let me get my other screwdriver. Nope, wrong side. Okay, so why doesn't it... Okay, I'll just have to stick in a lot of screwdrivers. So, I'll put this on time lapse. Okay, as you see, we have finally extracted the motor, and it is very uh, rusty and nah. It's just nasty. Uh, I don't know. In my free time, it probably won't be on video. I might put this in a uh, vinegar bath just to see if I can get all the rust off and run it on 12 volts or something. I don't know. This is a 48 volt motor. Straighten out those connectors. Might not be the right way to, but. Uh, tell me the right way in the comments. This is just how I figured it out, and it works. That is very corroded. You see that, guys? I'll tell you a few of the items that have been poured into this machine. Well, okay, when the battery was, you know, cutting out, I decided, nah, why not test its durability? Uh, one windshield wiper fluid, two, Windex, three, um, isopropyl alcohol, stuff you use to clean stuff. Um, you know, the remaining fluid in those, what do you call it, Clorox wipes bin. You know, when you empty one, there's some fluid remaining in there. Water, obviously. Salt water, because I heard that shorts out electronics. Um, what else? Various drinks. And it still works. Well, obviously, well, the battery's gone now. It won't work. But I've tested its durability. It still runs, even though all those odd things were poured into it. So I'm going to just try to bring this motor at least, hmm, sort of, back. I don't know. Maybe I will. So I'll just pop this aside. And it won't be on video. I'll guarantee you that. I don't have a uh, soldering station, so what I'm doing is how I get wires off a board. I don't know, does it make any of you cringe? I know it makes me cringe when I do this, but hey, some things you just gotta do it the way you do it, man. <laughs> Those are the studs left behind by the wires. So I'm 
and these are actually really well soldered uh, wires. Uh, another symptom that this thing had before it actually, you know, it, before it cut out and just kind of died was that the speed adjustment thing stopped working. And was it supposed to be a heat sink here or something? I don't know. Here's the controller board. You want to look at it, here you go. I'm filming in 4K Ultra HD, so you should be able to see literally everything. I'll spin it around. I'm going to flip those things over, whatever they are. I forgot what they're called. There it is. Yep. Let's see what else we got here. That's oh, just a potentiometer. That looks just to be some kind of potentiometer. And then a wheel. Yeah, that looks just to be a wheel with numbers on it. Yep. I might get a new leaf blower one day. It is very helpful. So yeah, that's kind of a full disassembly of this leaf blower. Let's see if the bottom of the fan is scuffed. Oh yeah, it's very scuffed up. It's still a fan. So that's it for this video. And there's everything. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Okay, guys, so it's technically the truth that I didn't show me, you know, storing this thing on camera, but I did, I washed it out in the backyard, let it dry, uh, and now, well, it, it runs, all right? I'm gonna power it off one nine volt battery. I can do three. Actually, we will step our way up to 27 volts. So, let's start with nine. Don't be too close to the motor. As you see, it runs on 9 volts. It makes a pretty good fan, actually. <laughs> it has the correct, uh, the correct attachment on the motor. Alright, now let's go to 18 volts. Let's step it up to 18 volts. There it is. Remember, this thing was rated for like 36 volts. All right, there it is. Here's the emblem from the side of the battery. It says 36 volts. So I believe that's 36 volt motor. Isn't that another nine volt battery? 27 plus nine. I think so. No, no. Uh, it's fired up with three quarter of the voltage. As you see, it runs strong. Still works as a great, it still works great as a motor. But yeah, I could, I guess I could keep that. Yeah. So th then again, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.